Good morning YouTube and welcome back. So in this video we're going to go over arrays and we're going to start with a single dimensional array which is basically a list where you can where you limit the amount of items that can go into the array. So much like a list you the only difference is is that it's a limited list so a list can have basically an infinite amount but an array cannot so a single dimensional array is sprung out like int with brackets and you can use strings uh, I'm gonna use int for simp simplicity and we are going to call this int a, an sd for single dimensional. It's going to equal a new int with your square brackets. Now inside these square brackets is where you enter your how many elements are inside of the array. Now to declare your, uh, your array, you go sd brackets 0 for the first element equals 5 and then SD 1 will equal 10 uh, SD 2 equals 3 and SD 3 which is the last element equals 6 and that's pretty much it <coughs> um, you can iterate through them like you do on a uh, in a string so you can go for each a string uh, like you do a list for each int i in sd console dot right line i and this will iterate through the list in order um, Another way you can do it is you can be specific. So SD2, uh, if you just wanted to write that one out. Well, I guess I have to write it. Console.WriteLine, SD2. So you're picking out a specific index like that. And it's going to write it four times because you said for each. Um, so it would be more like this. You do like that. So it says three. Um, another way you can do it <coughs> is by going four and i equals zero. i is less than sd dot length i plus plus and then console dot write sd square bracket i and that'll write them all out without spaces so it'll be one big number like that um, it's about it for that one uh, you can programmatically do these and I will do this at the very end after we go over jagged arrays so that's pretty much it for this um, it's a, it's all it is is a string where you limit the amount of elements in the string okay so comment that out now a multi-dimensional array there is a two-dimensional which you'll see a lot of, and a more than two-dimensional, which you will not see a lot of. So, in a two-dimensional array, <coughs> you do the same thing you did for a single dimension, except instead of having just one, okay, so for instance, let me open up GIMP for my Rubik's Cube example. So, in a single dimensional array, all you're doing is looking at this section here. 
so you can have if you have um, four elements you have element one element two element three now in a multi-dimensional array you can have this line and this line so you have multiple rows as well as multiple columns so in here this one here is <coughs> in layman's terms it's one row with multiple columns so it can look like element it can look like this so you have multiple columns but only one row <coughs> a two-dimensional array will have uh, multiple rows as well as multiple columns so in order to set this up you do integer in my case I'm doing an integer or to show you exactly how this works let's do a string for these so string you do an open square bracket with a comma and I'm gonna call this chord for coordinates equals a new string and I'm gonna use a the delimiter or the limitation I'm gonna use is going to be 3 and 3 because you have to instantiate both you have to instantiate how many rows and how many columns so the way you you add these in exactly like you do with the other one except you say exactly where to go exactly which row and which column you're on so this is going to be zero 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 one and zero two so since this is row zero this will be row one column zero kinda like that and I normally don't use uh, visual examples but I figured this would be a good time to use one or it's kinda like setting up coordinates in uh, geometry um, so and we might work on a project something like that later um, so on this one it is we go chord so coordinate <coughs> zero zero so the very first coordinate is going to equal we'll say zero zero <coughs> the next coordinate is going to be zero one that will equal 0, 1, coordinate 0, 2, which is the third one, will equal 0, 2. Now we go on to the next row, which is coordinate 1, 0. and then the next column will be 1 1 and then the next row is 1 2 and then we move on to the next row because there's three rows indicated by the first number Two zero equals not plus equals two zero coordinate two one 
equals to one coordinate to two will equal to two. <clears throat> now you can't iterate through these like before mainly because it just doesn't doesn't work quite that way <laughs> you can't do just a simple 4 int i equals 0 i is less than chord dot length i plus plus because if you do it this way you automatically get an error because i is a two base coordinate system meaning you have multiple rows and multiple columns so you have to have a second for loop for int j equals zero j is less than coordinate dot length j plus plus now the only problem with this is that if I go console dot write chord now we have i and j okay so let's see what this does and below this or after this I'm gonna go ahead and do a concatenation with a space so it spaces these out and then below it I'm gonna do a console dot right line to make a space so if we start this it breaks <coughs> because there are three rows so what we need to do is we need to do a and a string equals a chord i which that's not going to work either oh chord uh, enter see wrong number of indices so it expects two indices so I just had these a while ago I don't know what's going on now that's odd or n i equals zero Okay, well that worked. So, all I had to do, for some reason, all I had to do was change the value, since there's columns and rows, change the i is less than 3, so it's less than 3 columns, and i, or and j is less than 3, which is 3 rows, or sorry three columns then three rows or three rows then three columns so and then when it writes it out if my mouse would start working with me instead of moving it writes them out zero 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 one zero two kinda like a coordinate sheet you know of X's and Y's which is basically what this writes out to be so that's the basis of a coordinate system written out like this now you get to the fun part which okay so this right here um, a 2d would work like a table um, 
a court, an XY coordinate system, and so on and so forth. So let's comment this. <coughs> now the ones I really never use is anything more than three. So we're going to use a string, and this will be a kind of a 3D um, array, and I'm going to call it TD for 3D equals a new string. <coughs> and we're going to do 3, 3, and 3. Now, this is why. Okay, so a three-dimensional array would be good for this here. And the reason I'm, is would be good for a, you know, a three-dimensional object like a three-dimensional grid. So if you're ever looking at something on Blender or Autodesk Maya or any three-dimensional um, viewport, you're going to be basically using a 3D array. So the way we would set this up is exactly like we did up here except the way we do it is we go td 0 0 0 will equal 0 0 0 td 0 0 1 equals 0 0 one. Now you can kind of see how long this is going to actually take to set up. And there's the third one. Because now we're just now getting into the second portion of it. which this could take quite a while to do because in the first one up here how we had three rows and three columns that's only nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine but now we have three times three times three because it's a three-dimensional object so let's take this down to one <clears throat> so that you can see exactly how this would be set up. So zero 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 and then TD zero hang on. We have to at least do two to make this work correctly. T D zero zero one equals zero zero one T D zero one zero equals zero one zero and then zero one one zero one one and you go zero one zero zero or one zero zero And then TD one zero one <coughs> one zero one T 
TD one one zero. One one zero and TD one one one. All right, I think I got that zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one 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 or zero zero one one zero zero one one, and that looks good. Now, to iterate through these you have to kind of do a little bit actually I think it's yeah three-dimensional would require a three four loop I believe because if I just did a four int i equals zero i is less than two i plus plus four i int j equals zero j is less than 2, j++. Plus plus. And then if I just did a console.write, td ij, see it won't work because there's three of them. So we have to do another for loop. We'll do an l equals 0, l is less than 2, L plus plus and then much like we did before we do a console dot write TD I J L plus spaces and then below this one I'm going to do a console dot write line and below this one Now if we play it out, what it did was it went, oh, it does a 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. <coughs> so it's kind of like x, y, z coordinates. So if I take this one away, you can see how it's based out. So basically what it did, that's kind of bright, but what it does basically is it goes, okay, so this is 0, 0, 0. This one is 0, 0, 1. So this is 0, 1, 0. Zero two zero. I'm not right-handed, so writing with my mouse is kind of awkward. Zero zero two. Like that. <coughs> and then in the middle would be one zero. Wait. Scratch that. Here would be one. 0, 1. This would be 1, 1, 0. So it just looks down 1. I may have that messed up a little bit because this block here is still 0, 0, 0. And then this one here would be 0, 1, 0. And this would be zero zero one, <clears throat> and that's how you get the zero one one here, because it's one over and one up. This one, on the other hand, would be one zero one, which is this, which the one on the inside. So going this away. And going this away, under this block, would be 1, 1, 1. I hope that makes sense. It's in, it looks in three-dimensional space.
is the way it would be the easiest way to look at a three-dimensional array <clears throat> so I mean that's basically three-dimensional and I don't understand why anybody and if somebody knows I'd be more than happy to listen why anybody would need more than three dimensions because unless you're looking at the back of something I don't know but let's go ahead and move along into a jagged array which I just started learning about these because I haven't really had it really had needed a need for them but I found an I kind of found an easy way for me to understand them so hopefully it works for you too so first I'm going to initialize a comment to explain this a little bit better so what this is is you have a block and we're gonna go with there's one two four blocks and then yep so here <coughs> alright well I'll just explain it as I go it might make more sense that way so we're gonna have a block in a town okay so string and a jagged array <coughs> is you have an array of arrays so this will equal or we'll call it JA equals a new string now in this one all you have to do is store how many arrays there are so we'll do three arrays and these are basically the same as a two-dimensional array if you store it this way <clears throat> oh, and then so you go JA zero so the first array is going to equal a new string of say two elements JA1 or the second array is going to equal say a new a new string with one element the third array is going to equal a new string of three elements <clears throat> okay so I'm gonna store this in like it is a a block in a street and on this block there are three buildings the first building is two stories the second building is one story and the third building is three stories so let's just switch these uh... no we'll keep it as a string Okay. now inside JA zero of the first story there are there is a there's a bathroom or er, well hang on so what I'm saying here is that this is number of buildings in a block this is stating that the first 
building has two floors. The second building has one floor. And the third building has three floors. The first building on floor one, the whole first floor is going to be a lobby. <coughs> okay. The first floor, or the first building on the first floor, so in some countries we have a ground floor and then they have a first floor. In other countries, they have a first floor, which is the same as the ground floor, okay? So don't kind of get this mixed up. In the, so on the ground slash first floor, there's a lobby. On the, fir, on the next floor up, it's going to be the business. And I can't spell. What is wrong with me? work with me here. Don't make fun of my spelling. Okay, so we have a business. So now, and we're going to name the business instead. <coughs> and we're going to call this one, um, just call it prog for like programming or whatever you want. So JA on the next floor, or on the next building, on the ground level, we have, there's only one floor, so this is going to be the lobby slash business, and that's how you spell business, by the way. So I'm just going to use business. Now on the next building you have JA, so on the last building, on the ground floor, you're going to have the lobby and I'm going to say of building 3. Then you're going to have JA2 on the first, f <coughs> on the next floor up, you're going to have business 1. On the next floor up, you're going to have business 2. And we're going to go lobby of building one, business of B1, we'll call it B1 for building one. Now to get these out, because a standardized for loop will not work. To get these out of here, you go for int i equals 0, i is less than ja dot length i plus plus. <coughs> now you do a you have to create a new so you have to create a string and we're going to call this one inner equals um, j a i then you do for int j equals zero j is less than inner dot length j plus plus then we can do a console dot write inner j plus blank text. Then do a console dot write line 
Okay. <clears throat> really hoping this is making sense because I'm kind of I'm kind of confusing myself, which is bad, which means I'm probably confusing you guys. So let's hit start. And now you can see that it printed out lobby of business one, business of business one, lobby and business, lobby of business three, business one, and business one. So basically a jagged array is multiple arrays with different numbers of elements inside one array. So <clears throat> to me, it'd be kind of a list of lists, but it, well, yeah, it's an array of arrays. Now the cool thing about jagged arrays, though, is that I can do the same thing by declaring this as a multiple, as a 2D array also. So I can have 2D arrays stored inside of a jagged array. So if you're playing three games of tic-tac-toe, or you have um, like tournaments going on and stuff like that. So it's just really good, to, <clears throat> it's really good, a good one to know. And if you want more information on the jagged arrays and stuff like that, uh, let me know if you don't understand it, or if I could have under, or if I could have explained it better. But I think that's about it. I think I've already taken too much of your time up. Um, if you need me to make one specifically on each of these, uh, I'll be more than happy to. Um, but as always, subscribe for more videos. Hit that like button, and I will see you in the next video.